Tonight on CTV 11, we have an inside look at the Pompeii exhibit on campus and an analysis of the new Climate Action Initiative. Then we hit the runway with coverage of the CSU Fashion Show and later an incredible story from a student who discovered his family's invincible past. All this and more on CTV News starting now. Good evening, CSU. I'm reporter Kiara Coles. And I'm Sydney Paul. Let's get started on the stories of the day. One adult and a child are dead, and two other people have been injured following a head-on crash in Fort Collins Sunday morning. The crash occurred near the intersection of Harmony Road and Hinsdale Drive at about 11.40 a.m. Police say that the driver of a Pontiac Vibe headed west on Harmony Road and crossed over the center lane, crashing head-on into a 2001 Chevrolet pickup truck. The driver of the Pontiac died at the scene. The driver of the pickup, identified as Brian Sauer, 42, of Fort Collins, and two children who were inside the Pontiac were taken to the hospital. One of the children was pronounced dead at the hospital. The Larimer County Coroner identified the driver of the Pontiac as Tracy Salazar, 32. The child who died at the hospital was Salazar's and was identified as 7-year-old Alika Salazar. CSU's Holocaust Awareness Week starts this Friday, and a student here at CSU made a remarkable discovery about how the Holocaust impacted his ancestry. I didn't know I was Jewish until I found out my grandma was a Holocaust survivor. In a mundane circumstance, Henry Kiofsky's life would change forever. But then one day, my grandmother wrote a book. This book, this book actually. In the book titled, Her Name Shall Remain Unforgotten, he would learn of his grandma's, Miriam Deichmann's harrowing past. When I flipped to the chapter, named Auschwitz, and that's what caught my eye. And then I remember, it was a, it's the shortest chapter in the book, it's a page long, and I remember reading it and just being completely shocked, just like my whole world kind of changed in that moment. Hearing stories of his grandma's life, who was orphaned at a very young age, impacted how he viewed his heritage forever. Chasing you or something like that, it was, uh, it was your daily life knowing that it could very easily be taken away, like constantly living in a, in a sense of fear. And she managed to live uh, because a Catholic family in France had taken her in and had pretended that she was part of their family. And helped him not only further understand the extent of the Holocaust, but also brought attention to why it is so important we remember it. Today we have a different view of that, and that's, that's the reason like we learn about it, and that's the reason we try and remember it, uh, so it never happens again. Henry will be telling his grandma's story on Monday, February 19th. For more information, visit holocaust.colostate.edu. Tuition will increase by 3% starting in the 2018 to 2019 school year for all CSU students. Students do have a say in their fees through a program known as the Student Fee Review Board. This body is comprised of members intended to provide efficient, equitable, and consistent review of student fees and fee services, according to the University Board of Governors. SFRB reported the tuition increase is from a direct result from maintenance increases, minimum wage, and fringe benefits. This fee increase creates a university budget of $62 million overall for CSU. The top three programs that this fee supports are the University Fee Faculty Board, the Health Network, and the Lori Student Center. Hate crimes in the United States are on the rise. Leisha Brooks, the outreach director with the Southern Poverty Law Center, echoed this message in the Lori Student Center and spoke about ways that Colorado State University students can actually help mitigate racial bias. Brooks says it's on us and it's on you in particular as students. They are always the ones that push and create cultural change. If you don't feel it, it won't happen. It will go to the next generation. Brooks also discussed that st standing in solidarity with marginalized people includes considering their cultural culture and understanding their experiences. Brooks added that she is pleased that CSU students and faculty are conducting conversations about race and equality and that CSU is unique among other colleges in this respect. The University Center for the Arts hosted an artist lecture with CSU alum William Wiley, who discussed his historical photographs. I was there and have more for you now. CSU's own William Wiley gave a presentation at the Gregory Alicar Museum of Art on Thursday evening. The artist discussed his photography and his inspiration for shooting at the ancient site of Pompeii. I was interested in photographing Pompeii because I had started many, many years ago collecting 
the 19th century photographs by Giorgio Sommer, which are also in the exhibition. Wiley's talk came as a part of the Critic and Artist Residency Series at the museum, and his photographs provide something interesting for people with a wide variety of backgrounds. As with so many of our exhibitions, it really connects across such a wide range of different disciplines. So some of the obvious ones, of course, it's, it's looking at the site of Pompeii, excavation, collection practices at Pompeii, um, obviously connects with classics, with archaeology, with anthropology, uh, you know, with history, as well as with art history and studio. The exhibit and artist talk drew a full audience of community members, as well as CSU faculty and students. The, the technical acumen of William Wiley is uh, really, I think, unparalleled. The photographs themselves are, are immaculate, uh, technically, but just beautiful, beautiful images dealing with a really compelling subject matter. Boland hopes that the exhibition can provide students who have little experience with art with an opportunity to connect with the photographs. Um, there are just so many ways to connect with art. I think anybody who thinks they don't like art probably hasn't spent enough time finding what it is that they really connect with. Overall, the artist's connection to the university has given him the special opportunity to bring his work full circle. Come back as an alum and have the show and um, you know, share with uh, a town that I love and a university that I love and sort of, you know, my continued work. Wiley's work will be on display in the Griffin Foundation Gallery until April 21st. Reporter Christina Lane went to CSU's Elevate Climate Action event last Thursday, where community members in the city discussed ways to improve sustainability in Fort Collins. The City of Fort Collins partnered with CSU's Center for Public Deliberation to create the Elevate Climate Action Forum. Members of the community discussed the city's climate action plan and steps to take toward a more sustainable future. So the climate action plan is, uh, we're talking about things that the community themselves can do in order to help positively impact our environment. So steps like um, composting your waste by yourself, um, switching to low energy light bulbs, things like that that anybody could do in order to help the environment. Participants in the forum voted on the most efficient ways to reach the city's plan to reach a lower amount of carbon emissions used by the year 2020. The Center for Public Deliberation does a lot of really great events in the community, so we were really interested in um, engaging more with the community, with more people in the community, about how we can reach our climate action plan goals. We have these really big goals. Obviously, we as a city organization are doing a lot to try to reach those, but in order for us to reach our goals, we need um, everyone in the community to be contributing and everyone to be working together to reach those goals of carbon neutrality. Climate change can be a hard conversation to have with people um, and when you're talking about people's habits, about the way they use energy, about the way they get to work in the morning, um, things like that, that's something that's a really personal thing and it's not something that's always easy to talk about changing. Results from the forum will be taken to the city to be reviewed and create a solution that will improve our local environment. Fort Collins is really uniquely positioned in this respect, uh, partly because the city is forward thinking about these type of events, and partly because we have Colorado State and the Center for Public Deliberation. We have these resources here that a lot of communities don't already have. So we have trained facilitators, trained moderators, we have process designers, and all those things combined creates real opportunity for doing public engagement and public outreach in a way that's really substantive rather than symbolic. And so it's, it's, it's an important process and we're excited to do it more. For more information, please visit the CSU Political Science webpage at polisci.colostate.edu. I have a few of those energy-saving light bulbs in my house, and they work great. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely crazy how like such small changes amongst normal household items can make a huge difference in our sustainability. Definitely. Well, that wraps up our news segment for tonight, Rams. But don't go anywhere, because Edgar Cedillo will let us know how to prepare for the weekend with a full weather report. Have a great night, CSU, and remember that Rams take care of Rams.